Hello, uh, my name is Mike Tolte. I work for Microsoft in the UK and this is one of a number of short videos on the ActiveTouch site about Silverlight 4 and Silverlight is Microsoft's rich internet application technology. This is not the first video on the site. If you want to get more of a sort of holistic overview then I'd recommend taking a look at HTTP bit.ly slash active tuts SL intro. That's a kind of longer video with more things covered in it. What I want to do in this video is talk about styles in Silverlight. So we'll take a bit of a look at that. We'll look at doing this a little bit manually in the first instance and then we'll also look at expression blend and how we use styles inside of there. If you want to follow along you'll need some tooling. If you haven't already got it you'll need a Visual Studio I'm using 2010. You can use the Express Edition if you want, which is a free edition. To get that, go to http bit.ly slash VS Web Express. You'd also need the Silverlight tools for Visual Studio. So to get that, go to http bit.ly slash Silverlight for tools. And if you want to get Expression Blend as well, you can get a free trial version of Expression Blend. I don't have a short link for this one. Just go to HTTP Microsoft.com, Microsoft.com slash expression and you want Expression Blend for which you can get a free um, preview of from there. So those are all the things you need to follow along. Let's shut down Notepad, spin up Visual Studio and just talk a little bit about how we can use styles and how they work in Silverlight. So in Visual Studio, let's just go make a new project and I'll just choose a Silverlight application and accept the default naming and just go and create a website. And Visual Studio will create a couple of projects for me. Uh, the, the one we really focus on here is the Silverlight project over here. And I just want to change this design view so that I can see both the design surface and the XAML at the same time. If you saw the little short tutorial about XAML, some of the things that we do here will line up with that tutorial. And let's say that what I want to do is just put some kind of control onto this design surface and um, we'll go to our toolbox and pick a control. The button is the simplest one really so we'll just put a button on there and I'll just reset its layout so that it just kind of fits the whole space. So what we just did of course was create a button and that button is living inside a grid and that grid is living inside our user control. Now we can go and set properties on our button here. So we could set for instance the font size to be uh, 36, something like that. We get a big font size. We could set the foreground or yeah, foreground to be red, something like that, and we get red foreground. Quite often though you don't want to set individual properties on individual button instances or text box instances or label instances or whatever it might be. You want to set them sort of more globally. And so the way you do that is by using styles, much like you do in HTML with CSS. And we can style this button. It has a property called style. And to set that to a complex value, as we saw in the XAML video, it's easiest, although it would be unusual, to set button.style to an explicit style. We could say, here's a style. Now styles need to say what kind of element they're targeting. So in this case, it's a button. And then styles are very, very simple. They're just a bunch of setters. And the setters take a property like a foreground and set it to some value like, um, let's say, red, something like that. And if I'd done that right, we would have a style. I've missed a quote. So we set some um, value like so. And we could say, let's have another setter, setter and the property might be, uh, let's say, font size. And the value might be something like um, 36, something like that. And we're just setting that font size. We can set the font family. We can set any property that we like. Uh, it's important to realize that we can set complex values in styles. So we don't have to just use something like red. We could use a, a whole object um, definition, if you like, there. So we could set the setter.value using longer hand syntax. And then we can set it to whatever object we like. So say a, a linear gradient brush, for instance. And that linear gradient brush might have a gradient stop at, let's say, red. And it might have a gradient stop at, let's say, um, blue or something like that with an offset set somewhere. And so now you can see that we've got that gradient brush. So these values for setters can be arbitrarily complex objects, um, just to get that point across. But we'll just rewind that back to where we were just setting it to red, because that was kind of simpler. So let me just control Z my way out of this, all the way back to where we just set it to red. Now, what I'm doing here is unusual in that you wouldn't usually set up a style like this. You wouldn't normally set the style on a single button. It's kind of an odd thing to do. It's just kind of showing that you could do it. What we'd normally do is take that setting of that style away from the button. 
let's take the style away here and just copy it and just delete it out of there setting the button style back to its default because what we'd normally do is put a style into a resource um, collection so we could do that at the grid level we could do that at the user control level let's do it at the user control level for the moment so I could create a user control dot resources collection and into there drop my style and you notice the style is now being applied to the button again this is unusual if you've looked at resources at all you'd know and I said it in the video where we talked about these they usually have a key associated with them because this style doesn't have a key associated with it it's being applied to all buttons so for instance if I was to go and create another button somewhere so let's go and just make our grid have a couple of grid rows we'll have a row and then we'll have another row our button will jump up to be in that top row then what we could do is have another button down here let's just say grid dot row equals one content equals button two something like that and notice that the style is also being applied to button two so it's applied to both of those buttons because that style is kind of in scope with no key associated with it so it targets all buttons that are found from here down to here and our buttons live in that grid so consequently they are targeted by that style let me just show you the sort of flip side of that if you want if, if I created another grid here and wrapped it around my button so that grid is now wrapped around that button let me just lay out the XAML I could then move this style I could say let's take this style and we'll just sneak it down here into the resources on this subgrid and now it's only applying to that one particular button because that's the only one that sees that particular style if I wanted a style to apply to all other buttons I could go back up here and define another style I'll just copy this one let's set the foreground to green on this one and you can see that's now being applied to all buttons within its scope and you can probably get the idea as to how these things are combining it makes perfect sense that this style is being applied to all buttons within this user control but down here we have another style that applies to all buttons within this particular subgrid and so it overrides it's kind of very natural way of doing things now styles without keys um, as we've seen apply to all of the controls that are within the same sort of scope but if we give the style a key so let's go up to the top of our file here and give this style up here which is the green style let's give it a key of x key equals green style you'll see that as soon as when we give it a key this button down below stops using it because it's no longer an implicit style so it is possible for the button to explicitly pick up that style if it wanted to we could go down here and we could say okay this button is going to use the style called green style and at that point then it's going to pick that up again and that kind of makes sense the other thing that we can do is that at the moment our two styles are just direct copies of each other and the only thing that changes between the two is that one style defines um, a red foreground and one defines a green foreground so that would be kind of wasteful to work that way what we would usually do is derive the styles from each other so let me steal actually let's just cut this out of this grid here uh, in fact we might even get rid of the whole subgrid at this point we might not need that so let's just get rid of that subgrid and what we could do is go and define our styles up here so for instance let's go and say I have a, a green style in this case let's copy that or actually let's just define a new style and we'll say we have a X key of red style and let's say this is based on the resource green style and then let's just go ahead and say there's a setter in here for the property which is foreground we have to say what it targets of course targets buttons foreground and we set the value to be red oops excuse me I just hit a button that I wasn't expecting to so now we've got this red style if we took uh, wanted to apply that explicitly to this button down here we could just say your style is the static resource of red style and you can see that's now being applied alternatively we could take that away and we could take the key off this red style and even though it's deriving from the green style it's still now applying to all buttons that don't explicitly mention a style now because we have this sort of hierarchical lookup for these things where we can go from the button to its parent to its uh, parent trying to find styles that are either explicitly named or are set implicitly with no name we can even move these things all the way up to the application level so I can steal these two styles 
chop them out of there and you notice that the styles go back to their defaults. And I could open up my application file over here, app.xaml, which also has some resources and just drop my styles in there. Go back to our main page and you can see our buttons are still using those styles, even though they're now not defined anywhere on this, uh, this page, if you like, at all. They're now at sort of application level and being used up here. And the other thing that's fairly common to do is kind of factor this out even a little bit further than that into separate resource dictionaries that can then be included. So, for instance, I can go over to my application over here and we can add to it a new item. Let's go to uh, Silverlight Resource Dictionary. Let's call this, I don't know, red.xaml. Add that in. Let's go to and add another one. Oops, I just clicked the wrong button. Let's go to add another one. And we'll just call this green.xaml. And what we could do is go back to our app.xaml, steal this green style. Let's just go into green.xaml and drop it in there. And I'm not going to give this a key in there. And I'll steal that style and go to red.xaml with no key again and just make that red. So we kind of got two lumps of styles here that apply to all buttons within our application. Let's go back to our app.xaml. And instead of listing these styles in here now, what we can do is use a thing called a resource dictionary and set up its merged dictionaries. And we can have a dictionary where the source is set to red.xaml and we can have a um, resource dictionary where the source is green.xaml and let me just take one of those for the minute and comment it out so we'll just comment that one out so at the moment we're just linking red.xaml into our application I'm not sure I've actually quite got these um, these uh, files correctly set up over here so I think what I need to do is just go to them find their properties Make sure this is set to um, resource and we don't want to actually compile these. And let's go over to this one, go to its properties, make sure this is set to resource. We don't want to compile that either. I think that'll be okay. And let's just press a five on that and run the application. Oh, we're still requesting something called green style in our in our main page. Let's just uh, close that down. Go back to our main page .xaml, and we'll not request that green style there. We'll simply go press F5. Just run the application up, and you can see both of our buttons are picking up a red color. If we go back over to our app .xaml, let's take away the red version here and uh, let's bring in the green version here, press F5 on that, we'd hope that our application would be picking up the green styles, and it is. And whilst I won't do it here in this tutorial, it's not too much in the way of rocket science to actually load um, these dictionaries dynamically at runtime, and then you have a basis of a theming system inside of Silverlight. And actually there's some um, additional uh, libraries you can download from the Silverlight Toolkit that make it even easier than that. So we have theming it, it because we can just go and switch between different resource dictionaries at runtime. Now a lot of what we've looked at so far feels kind of manual. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Let's just refine these resources down again. Uh, let's take out some of this stuff and let's create a new style. We'll just say key equals big font, something like that. We'll say target equals button again. And we'll just go and set a simple property here which will be font size and we'll set that value to be um, 48 something like that so that's my big font style and let's go and set another one which will just be um, let's just say small font something like that and we'll just set that value to be um, 24 or something like that and, and when we got these things set up we can very much go back to our main page .xaml over here and we could grab one of these buttons and just click on it and we could find its style and go and apply resources inside of here in Visual Studio and you'll notice that we've got the big font resource, the small font resource. We can click on these and it just picks them up very easily. Go to this one, set its style, let's go and apply the um, small font resource to that one and it picks it up. So whilst Visual Studio doesn't really help too much with defining styles, it's very good for picking styles out of resource. It makes that kind of easy. If I want to define styles in an easy way then Expression Blend is pretty strong at that. So let's just shut down Visual Studio here and let's switch over to Expression Blend for a second. So over in Blend, let's just do File New Project here and create a Silverlight application. And that's fine. And 
I don't usually use blend with the XAML showing. It's it's un unusual for me to do that, but I'll just do it for the video so we can see the XAML a little bit here. And our design surface then becomes very small at this resolution. But let's go and just drag something like a button on here. There's our button. And of course in Blend we can go and set explicit properties for the button. It's exactly as you would expect. However, we can also go to an object like that and select it and then just say object. What we want to do is edit the style. And Blend says, well, do you want to edit a copy of its style as it stands right now, or do you want to create an empty style? So let's say, well, let's create an empty style for this object. And Blend says, okay, do you want to name this with a key, i.e., is it an explicit style, or would you like it to apply to every button? And we can make that choice. So we're, we're graphically defining what we were typing into the XAML. And then we've got a choice as to, do you want the style defined in this document or in the application? Or would you like it in one of your resource dictionaries? Now we don't have any resource dictionaries at the moment, so let's create one. Create a new resource dictionary called resource dictionary onexaml We create that. And now the style is going to go into that resource dictionary. So we're now editing that style. Now, as you can see up here, we're in the style. Let's go and set something like the font size. So let's just go in blend and set the font size. And we'll just set that to, uh, I don't know, something big. 48 points, something like that. Let's go back to our main page.xaml. There's our button using the style. Let's take another button now. Just drop it onto that, onto that page. And notice that both buttons are now using that style. So it's very easy to edit styles here inside of Blend. And if we just go and take a look at um, the resource dictionary that we've edited, if we look at the XAML for this, notice that what we've effectively done is created a style that targets all buttons and changes the font size. If you wanted to change something else about that style, we can go back to our um, objects here. We can click on one of the buttons. We can say object, edit style. I want to edit the current style. And let's then go and say perhaps we'll change the um, foreground once again. Let's just go and change that to be, um, let's just expand that um, down. Let's change that to red. Let's go back to our main page. You can see both buttons are now using that uh, that foreground of red. So it's very easy to edit styles in here inside of Blend as well. So much, much easier than typing things out. And in fact, uh, it's a great editor for doing that kind of stuff. So styles show up in Blend too, and they're all pretty much graphically editable here inside of Blend. So I hope that gives you a flavor of styles and what they do, how they can be derived from each other. And in fact, you know, when we were editing the style here, I don't know if I pointed that out, we can... Uh, go and create a new style here. Um, and the one thing it doesn't really give you is any option around basing it on a, another style, deriving a style. So that's something to be aware of that um, we don't have that in there. Uh, something that we did do in the Silverlight side of things. But hopefully, again, this gives you a, a picture of what styles are, how they're used, how we can drive them from other styles, how we can have implicit styles, how we can have explicit styles. And that they're basically just a bunch of property setters. So they're quite simple things uh, to, to use but very, very powerful because you don't want to have to set properties on every single piece of UI inside your application.